over and over I hear, not only this is the best Thai food I've ever had, I, I, I have people telling me it's the best food they've ever eaten anywhere. Imagine if the Gulf Coast here were not part of the United States, but it was part of the Kingdom of Thailand. How would the food translate? You're not just copying recipes that have been passed down from Chiang Mai or from Bangkok or from Surat Thani in the South. You're all of a sudden doing things that are authentic Thai taste with local goods. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Benjamin Jatong Painter or uh, Chef G. I am Graham Painter and my official title is husband. And I'm the wine director and co-owner with the lovely Chef G. We actually met when I was living in Bangkok uh, in a restaurant. <laughs> and uh, you know, imagine it's dark out and I'm wearing these Kazal sunglasses. And there's this cute girl sitting over in the corner and I could audibly hear her saying in Thai, what does this guy think, he's cool? So I made a beeline to introduce myself in Thai. Yep. And she was really surprised that this white guy walks in and speaks in Thai. And so I was able to get her phone number. We basically got here to be closer to my dad and with the intention that, okay, maybe in a couple of years, we're gonna go back to Thailand. And man, we got in here and Houston had a lot of attraction, a lot of offering. She started to work with some really great chefs. For me, it's, uh, you know, on the time I love to cook and I get homesick because uh, I move in here, I just, you know, want to eat the food. It just brings me back home and I do not get much here yet, that's why I'm Telegram, like if one day I open my restaurant, I just have to make sure it will make my homesick go away. It, maybe just like one moment you sit down, you eat, and you feel like, oh, that's the flavor I'm missing. You know, this farm to table idea, if I take local indigenous ingredients, stuff that's grown here, and forget Thai recipe, imagine that Thai taste is what matters, not the recipe. The wheels started to turn, and that's when we started to talk to investors and started to dream up this great tasting menu restaurant where she would reimagine a Thai can of food using local uh, Gulf Coast ingredients. Our story is one of necessity. It, it's kind of strange to say it, but we were kind of born during COVID. The first day that we opened, there were 96 tickets and it was chaos. There were like drivers coming up, people walking up to the window. Of course, they couldn't get in because the dining room was shut. It was the height of COVID in the summer in 2020. And somehow we got through that night and I said, so um, how are we doing on stock? And she said, what do you mean stock? The food industry at the time was so grim. They were, they were reporting on so many closures. Anybody that was doing something to open was good news. They just come in the sub part. Yeah. And yeah, it never dipped off. We have implemented a reservation system that does give people a little bit of space, a little bit of time, and we're able to stagger it out a little bit. But look around you in this little room, you know, I mean, we, we are right at the capacity. Uh, and we have to be here because with this low of an occupancy, we have to be able to pay this staff and these farmers everything that it's worth. To, to do what it is that they do. A little bit of good news. We've signed a lease. November 1, we will be operational two miles down the road, still in Harrisburg. And the place we're gonna be in is three times the occupancy. So the, the James Beard Award, to put it in perspective, is the Oscars of the food world. It's a big deal. G and I had decided beforehand, we flew our entire staff to Chicago because she made it clear, if I make finals, this is your award too. This is not just, speaking for G, not just mine, but this is everybody in staff that made this possible, so you deserve to go to, to Chicago. I always carry this with me everywhere. So just remind myself, like, don't scare to work hard, because this is like, yeah, it's always in my purse. It's, I keep it close to me. So it's, when I'm really tired, I just like pull it up and look at them like, oh, we do it, we make it, and we just keep going. I chatted with people who had monumentally large restaurants and some like us who had little tiny hole in the walls that had managed to get the attention of the foundation. And they all told me the same story. They said, enjoy it right now. <laughs> when you get back, nothing will prepare you for what you're gonna face. 
I know that this lady has deserved this award since she's been born. Like, she was born to do what she's doing. I just, just like love to eat the good food. I'm sure I'm not the first or only one do that. So my whole goal is make sure I cook the good food. You know, when I saw people smile and happy with it, I'm really happy with it. Proud is it doesn't even do justice to how I feel about her and about this award. It seems like it was yesterday that we were in Yangon in Myanmar and we were trying to start a restaurant called the Yangon Picnic Club and she was roasting hams and making her own mayonnaise and baking bread in our, in our little flat in Myanmar so we could make sandwiches. Um, and then fast forwarding to now, it's beyond our wildest imagination. This is our love story and people are right along with us. If I don't come to this country, I would not have this chance to, to be like who I am today. Like this is, it's mean a lot, like a lot, a lot for me. I'm just so happy and so honored about that.